Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some cards that have recently gone up, eight cards in particular, and these were great buy opportunities at some time in the past. Now, has the boat sailed? Perhaps, but they will always be great in the decks that play them. So Aldrazi Temple, still legal in modern, and that's a very big, big difference between something like Eye of Ugin, which is banned. Aldrazi Temple went from pretty much pennies, it looks like, as soon as it was reprinted from Modern Masters 2015. As you can see, the little X symbol, Origins, Battle for Zendikar. It was Big spike happened at Oath of the Gate Watts and it hit about $8. Today it is $13. Again, the big spike happened after the Adrazis happened, which makes a lot of sense. But even today it is more expensive. And because it sees some play in Vintage, it sees some play in Legacy. Modern, it does. Adrazi, I would say, is a tier 2.5 deck, almost a tier 2 deck sometimes. It's not going to be the Death Shadow, but doesn't need to be. Next, Aggravated Assault. Now, this one is quite fascinating from the price spike. As you can tell, it was probably a dollar, maybe less than a dollar at RTR. And then it became popular in EDH. One of the interesting parts about EDH, when a card becomes popular, you normally have six months to pick it up. I'm not entirely sure why that is the case, but let's say uh, 100 decks play this card now. Well, if it was recent, so let's, today, nobody's playing the deck. Tomorrow, 100 people are playing the deck. From that day on, you probably have 90 to 180 days to pick up the card at the current price point. EDH is more of a natural organic growth. You're not going to see that many people buy let's say four copies, eight copies, because EDH, you need one copy. And it's not a place that too many speculators highlight, uh, mainly because it is difficult to move in terms of how liquid the cards are. It's hard to find EDH players who want this single card, as opposed to finding players who need four of the best card in standard right now. That card in standard will move a lot easier than four copies of an EDH card. Talking about EDH cards, this is one of my favorite cards. I remember playing this when I was younger. Onslaught, I was in, I believe, middle school. Yes, probably seventh grade. A lot of sleepovers and stuff like that. And this was one of my favorite cards. I don't know if it was standard playable. We didn't really play standard at the time. We just played this format called Emperor. And Emperor has not been played a lot. I've never played an Emperor game since middle school or high school of that, without that group of friends. This card was very, very good in Emperor. This card was just very good overall. Anytime you have any mana acceleration, you have to look at it and say, huh, that's intriguing. It's mana acceleration in white. I like cards like this where it's cheap, it's easy to play, it's older. Uh, and that's one of the reasons bulk is such a good hold. I wouldn't say go out and buy bulk. I've been looking at bulk prices on Craigslist and they are very, very high and you will never get your money back from paying 25 cents for a bulk card. It's just not going to happen. Now, how would you accumulate bulk? I think you just buy older collections they didn't come with bulk. Next, we'll talk about this one. Voice of Hunger, New Phyrexia as a whole is a very valuable set. So when people say that magic cards cannot go up in price, that's not correct. Our sets cannot go up in price. Um, it's not entirely correct because it's RTR. A big difference from RTR till today is the amount they printed. When you compare RTR to New Phyrexia, I would not be surprised if three times as much RTR was printed in New Phyrexia, although they are relatively close in date, right? So it is quite intriguing. Um, it is very, very interesting that you even have Innistrad. Innistrad boxes are very good as well in terms of how much they are. Not as good as New Phyrexia, but, but since RTR happened, you don't have any box movement. 
and that is the sad part about people telling you to invest and buy in boxes. In the past, it was true, but today it is not true. New Forexer, it was true that if you had just opened New Forexer and you had boxes, unopened boxes of New Forexer, you are sitting on a gold mine that if you cracked it open, the cards would actually have some type of value. Uh, maybe they were 25% or 50% of what you would have as an unsealed box. But something like RTR, nah. And Origins, like buying Origins boxes had to be the be worst call. And I've saw it made by a few people. You got slaughtered. You got taken to the slaughterhouse if you were sitting if you're sitting on Origin boxes today. Next, Princess Falia is finally over ten dollars. Um, I knew she would get to this point. And uh, yeah, I own a couple hundred copies, and this is my favorite card of all time in Magic. I'm getting a bunch of her altered now, and the altars will look good. We're doing the four season altars, then we're doing some ponder altars, and I'm very, very happy with the person I'm using. Uh, Brian is very good, and we work together for some time. Uh, one of the things that I want to have is just so many alters of Philea that it would just drive people insane. So yeah, Philea, favorite card, $10 now. I knew she would be here. One day she would be here. Uh, well, what did I look for in Philea? Weak set. Dark Ascension is a weak set. Like, there's no other way for me to say it. It's a weak set. I like that. It's a unique card, and it sees play in the strongest of decks, including vintage formats and legacy formats. Machaeus, the Unhallowed. Talking about Dark Ascension, uh, this card has always been good. I've always loved it. Um, it's always been kind of one of those creepy cards. The regular Machaeus in white was not good. But Machaeus Unhallowed for... It's good. Anytime you have plus one, plus one counters, anytime you have zombie dudes, and the human effect's kind of interesting as well. Undying is always fun. It has some combos in the EDHs. Great, great card. Happy to see it at $24. It seems a little high to me, but it makes a lot of sense. At RTR, this was a sub $5. If I had to guess, I would say it's $4, maybe $3. Um, it is something that I look at and it's not pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious why it went up in price recently. Zombies and all, right? It's a great EDH commander as well. So Dark Ascension was a set that mm, I looked at and I was saying, hmm, this is a middle set. Not much of it was open compared to Innistrad. Not much, not many people want sealed boxes of this because there's not like a chase chase card. Um, like Innistrad, you had Chase Lily and then you had Snap. And because of Avacyn Restored was so valuable too, you had this middle set where no one wanted to open anything because you had Avacyn in the back end and you had Innistrad in the front end and both those sets are incredibly valuable. All right, Cultivate. I have a, a few dozen copies. I have to count them out. Probably around 40, 50 copies of this card. I'm not sure how I came across to them. At one moment in time, I was really, really big into promos, which was a total disaster. I mean, Cultivate went well, right? You buy Cultivate for less than a dollar, and now it's $8. In Europe, it's still $2, right? But I don't know. I don't li live in Europe, so it's $8 for me. So yeah, that strategy did not work out well. Uh, yeah, you do have some wins like Cotovate, but if I broke even using that strategy, it would have been okay. I don't know if I broke even though. Uh, it's hard to calculate because I bought lots of really bad ones like Moondrop Shaman and uh, there was so many bad promos back in the day. Uh, but it's surprising and Cotovate, Cotovate of all the promos uh, has gone up. FNM promos for a very long time were just pretty much... Uh, Worthless. Like, I don't want to say it, but it was. Right. I love this card. There was a time that this card was one of the cheapest. As you can see, even RTR was very cheap. But even in New Frexa, no one played the card. I believe it was, it was the pre-release promo. I cannot imagine it was a re release promo, but um, the pre-release promo would kind of make sense. So... Everyone got one. Everyone has it. No one really wants to open any of them. The original copy is more expensive than the pre-release promo because the original artwork is just fantastic. 
I remember this being like a bulk mythic and I looked at it and I said, wow, this is a really good card. This is a card that I would love to play and it's something that I think will have enormous potential to go up in price later on. And it did. So a $20 card finally hit $20. A lot of these cards I talked about today was I had set a milestone like Falia. I had set if she hits $10, I'm going to sell them. And for this one, I have many copies of her, um, including a foil copy. I wasn't so a big fan of Alice Norm, and I wasn't a big fan of the green one or the red one. The red one is like meh, still meh, and the blue one was, it's also gone up in price, but I was a huge fan of the black one, and I always felt the artwork was fantastic on the original copies, so I would always try to trade into original ones and not promos. But back then, there were so many promos, you couldn't just like, I would, people would throw it in a deal. Let's say that the deal was like a $20 deal and you had to get, and you were 18 and they had to get to 20. They'd be like, okay, just throw in this one card. And they would be like, yep, done. Because it was like $2 at the time or $3 at the time. It wasn't valuable. But I knew that it would hit $20 one day. Just like I knew file I would hit 10. The question is, do I want to sell them now? Uh, and probably the answer is no, because even though they will be reprinted, I'm almost positive that they will be reprinted under a new policy, under a new Wizard of Code policy. I just love them too much. It's just really hard to accumulate them today, so I'm just happy that I have what I have. Because if I were trying to accumulate the failures I have today, it would just I would bleed out money, right? And then the same with this card. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.